My name is Dr. Gary Lanigan, and I run the Gaseous Emissions uh, sub-program at Johnstown Castle Research Centre. Basically here today we're talking about agricultural greenhouse gas and ammonia emissions. And Ireland, or agriculture in Ireland comprises uh, a quarter of national greenhouse gas emissions and almost 100% of national ammonia emissions. The good news is that basically uh, Irish agricultural emissions have been coming down from 1998 to the present day and in fact uh, Irish greenhouse gas emissions are 8% under our Kyoto targets and also are 16.5% reduced relative to the peak in 1998. Our agricultural greenhouse gas emissions are mainly comprised of methane from enteric fermentation and manure management and nitrous oxide from the application of synthetic and organic fertilizers and also by animal defecation and urination uh, on the pasture. Um, essentially, the main abatement measures that we're looking uh, at, first of all, are methane abatement, where the main focus is on an increase in productivity per unit head and essentially reducing emissions per unit product. And the main abatement strategies here are animal diet. So uh, changing animal diet to reduce the amount of roughage in that diet so that the, the, the actual um, food moves through the rumen quicker. Uh, extending the grazing season because there's much higher emissions associated with housing of animals. Reducing finishing times in the beef sector because the sooner you finish animals, the less methane is produced over the lifetime of that animal. And also improving uh, the EBI, the breeding index. And all in all, we think that you can get uh, uh, quite a substantial reduction on methane emissions of maybe about between 10 and 20 percent uh, if you actually combine all of these measures together. So in general, from all our emission strategies in terms of animal diet, grazing, finishing times and improvement of the economic breeding index, we estimate that we can reduce our emissions per unit product by between 10 and 20 percent um, over the next few years. In terms of abating agricultural nitrogen, which mainly comprises of ammonia and nitrous oxide, ammonia actually contributing the largest loss of agricultural nitrogen in terms of the land spreading of slurries or the land spreading of urea. Uh, what we have, what we're really focusing on is uh, the timing, uh, the efficient timing of slurries. So here we have, for example, um, where we uh, alter the timing from uh, a, a period where there's a high amount of volatilization during midday to during the evening, or also early spreading of slurry. So moving from summer spreading of slurry to spring spreading of slurry, we find we can reduce ammonia emissions by approximate by over 50%. So that actual reduction in loss of ammonia also is an increase in the nitrogen fertilizer replacement value of uh, that slurry for the farmer. So there's a win-win scenario. You both uh, reduce your ammonia emissions and you save on fertilizer. Also, in terms of reducing nitrous oxide emissions, uh, one of our main focuses is on uh, clover and grass clover uh, swords. And what we have here on the graph is uh, on the x-axis, we have the proportion of legume in the loium sward and on the y-axis the cumulative nitrous oxide emissions. And the predicted set of emissions is that as you move uh, through the legume, as the legume proportion increases you get a, a proportionate increase in uh, nitrous oxide emissions. But what we actually see is a large decrease in nitrous oxide emissions where you have between 20 and 30 percent of clover in the sward. Um, and what that represents, with 20% clover in the sward, we see a 41% decrease in nitrous oxide emissions. And again, that nitrous oxide is a loss of N to the farmer, or a loss of N that, that should be in the soil or in the plant. Finally, uh, there's carbon sequestration. And that, this part is, is ignored a lot at the moment. But really, most of our emissions uh, can actually be offset, not only reduced, but offset by and sequestered into the soil, either by forestry, where we can sequester between three and five million tonnes, energy crops, which we can sequester and offset fossil fuel emissions by up to 1.2 million tonnes, um, pasture and tillage management, and particularly pasture sequestration, where we can offset emissions by maybe four million tonnes if we can include all the CO2 that's sequestered in the pasture. And overall, we can use a mosaic of these strategies to actually reach our 2020 uh, climate change targets.